Good morning, dear children and all my beloved friends. My name is Paul Tavi and I'm the leader of Group 7. And I'm here to be a representative for my group. In my group has six members, including me, Kenya, Rico, Rosa, Bethel, and Mani. As you may know, we all have been given a test to do research as a group to do a presentation. And my group going to talk about the governance and government. But before we go any further of all the topic, I would like to introduce to all of you about the content that has in my topic first. In the topic of governance and government has six contents that will rep that will explain to all of you step by step. The first one will talk about what is governance the characteristic of good governance, purpose of good governance, and also talk about how to achieve the purpose of good governance. And the second one is, what is government? The purpose of government, and organization of government, function of government. And the third one is, we'll talk about the relation between governance and government. Besides this, the fourth also talk about the difference between governance and government. Last but not least, I will give you to all of you about the conclusion and the last of the us my topic will give you a reference and it is a and it is an easy way to all of you to do a research to do more research about governance and government. So let's start our topic that talk about what is governance and go and the characteristic of good governance. First, governance can comprise all of the process of government and it is a way of rule, norm and action are structured, sustained, regulated and held accountable, whether undertaken by the government of state, by a market or by a network, over a social system and whereas through the law, norm, power or language of an organized society. Government relate to the process of interaction and decision making among the actors involved in a collective problem that lead to the creation, reinforcement, and reproduction of social norms and institutions. Moreover, it could be described as a political process that exists in and between formal institutions. Government can be used in several contents such as corporate government, international government, in, sorry, international governance, national governance, and local governance. Government is one of the actors in governance. Another actor involved in governance vary different, sorry, depending on the level, on the level of government that is under decision, under discussion. In rural area, for example, another actors may include influent landlord association of patient farmers cooperative NTO research institution, religion, leader, finance institution, political party, and the military extra. So after we, after we clear about the meaning and also the definition of the government, now we have to understand and more about the characteristic of good government. As you may know that good governance has eight characteristics. First one is effective and efficient, equitable and inclusive, responsive, follow the rule of law, consensus oriented, accountable, party, petitory, transparency. So after we know about the eight characteristics of good governance, we have to understand clear about the about each part and also about each characteristic. So first one is participation. Participation by both men and women by both men and women is a key cornerstone of good governance. Participation could be either direct or through legitimate in in sorry, intermediate institution or representatives. It is important to point out that representative democracy does not necessarily mean that the consent of the most vulnerable in society would be taken into considerable consideration in decision making. Participation need to be informed and organized. This means freedom of association and 
expression on the one hand and an organized civil society on another hand and the second one is rule of law it means that all the government have to follow the law of rule or the rule of law good governance require fair legal frameworks that are enforced impartially it also requires full protection of human rights particularly those of minorities impartial soul enforcement of law require an independent independent to carry and an incorruption incorruptible police force and the search one is responsiveness. Good government requires that institution and process try to serve of the stakeholder within a reasonable time frame. And transparent, 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 transparency. It means that decision taking and their enforcement are done in a manner that follow rule and regulation. It also means that information is freely available and directly accessible to those who will be affected by such decision and their enforcement. It also means that enough information is provided and that is provided in easy, understandable form and media. Accountability. Accountability is a key requirement of good governance. Not only governmental, governmental institution, but also the private sector and institution, civil society organization must be accountable to the public and to the institutional stakeholder. In, in general, an organization or an institution is accountable to those who will be affected by a decision or actor. Accountability cannot be enforced without transparency and the rule of law. Consensus oriented. Good governance requires media, mediation of the different interests in society to reach a broad consensus in society on what is the best interest of the whole community and how this can be achieved. It also requires broad and a long term perspective on what is needed for sustainable human development and how to achieve the goal such development that is can only result from an understanding of the historical, cultural and social context of a given society or community. And equality and inclusiveness. A society is very independent on ensuring that all its members feel that they have a stake in it and do not feel included from the mainstream of society. This requires all groups, but particularly the most vulnerable, have opportunity to improve or maintain their well-being. And the last one of the characteristic of good governance is effectiveness and efficiency. Good governance means that process and institution institution produce results that meet the needs of society while making the best use of resources at their disposal. The concept of infancy in the context of good governance also co covers the suitable use of natural resources and the protection of the govern of the environment. So that's all about the a characteristic of good government. After we know about the characteristic of good government, I would like to explain to all of you about, about the purpose of good government. According to an overview of good government my book, was mentioned about the purpose of good government. Good government play an important role in order to develop the country and give a benefit to the citizen as well because good government made for, made for manage, manage the economic, social affair and any crisis that happen in a country or state. And purpose still, as you may know that purpose still a purpose if we didn't try hard on it or, or if we didn't work hard to achieve it. So now I will explain to all of you about the way or how to achieve the purpose of good government. In order to achieve and to see the result of good governance, every people recognize that governance has to require 
the choir of sustainable human resource development. There are a lot of ways of sustainable human resource development, such as give all the citizens with good health care service. If they can get a good health care service, they can live longer and live their life without any concern about the illness. And if they got no illness and they can stay strong, they can be a part of developing, developing the country. Moreover, they also can be more active in human resource development. According to the Article 72 of the Canadian Constitutional Law said, the health of the people shall be guaranteed. The state shall give full consideration to disease prevention and medical care. Poor people shall receive free medical consultation in pub public hospitals, infirmary, and maternities. The state shall establish infirmary and maternity in rural, in rural area. And the second way is give all the citizens a good and enough educational service. Based on Article 66 of the Canadian Constitutional Law said, the state shall establish a comprehensive and unified system of education throughout the country capable of guaranteeing the principles of freedom of education and equal access of schooling in order to offer its citizen the equal opportunity for the betterment of his or her living condition. And the last one or also the last way to achieve the purpose of good governance is give all the citizens a chance or an opportunity to receive the benefit from the social affairs that they have joined such as baguette work in order to help them to feel to fulfill their their daily needs.